Hello. Today I am going to show you how to self-host a Tor Snowflake proxy. Snowflake is a system that allows people from all over the world to access censored websites and applications. An end user living in a country that censors Tor traffic connects peer-to-peer -to, -peer to a Snowflake proxy. Their traffic gets forwarded to a Tor bridge who in turn provides an entry into the Tor network. If you want to learn about how Snowflake works in detail, follow the links in the description section below. This is not about using a Snowflake proxy, but rather, about helping users who live in Tor censoring jurisdictions, to access the Tor network. I am going to install Snowflake on a dedicated VPS. Although you can also use any old computer or even a Raspberry Pi, at home, behind your router. Unlike Tor Relays, the IP addresses of Snowflake proxies are not publicly known. So if the jurisdiction where you're planning to host your Snowflake proxy does not censor Tor, you will not have issues running it, while helping other people who are not so lucky. This is going to be very easy. Let's start. If you're confused about anything that I'm about to do, please take a look at the videos linked below. You can see me do everything from buying a VPS anonymously, to hardening a server. So, I've just gotten myself a VPS. I'm accessing it for the first time. First, I will upgrade, and reboot. I will change the default port for SSH, and disable password authentication. Installing fail to ban, to protect SSH from brute force attacks. I will log out and write an entry for my Snowflake server into the SSH config file. SSH back in and add a firewall rule for allowing SSH access. Enabling the firewall. Finally, I will create a user for Snowflake, with restricted rights on the system. And my server is ready. Go to snowflake.torproject.org the easiest way of running a Snowflake proxy, is by installing a browser extension. It is literally just one click, and you will be forwarding traffic from users who need a Snowflake bridge to access the Tor network. I will go with a more consistent and reliable solution. A self-hosted standalone proxy. Follow this link. And here are the instructions to build from source and run a Snowflake proxy. Go to git.torproject.org Look for the Snowflake repository and copy the link for cloning it. Please do not make the user running Snowflake member of the pseudo group. For administrative functions, use another user or just default back to root. To build Snowflake from source, I need to install the Go programming language. I will also install a tool for displaying my network usage. Inload.
This is very important. You need to allow incoming connections to all ephemeral UDP ports. The following command will list your system's ephemeral port range. Clone the Snowflake repository into your Snowflake user's home. Go to the subdirectory, proxy. And to build the Snowflake proxy, type, go, build. There you have the binary that runs your proxy. You can ask for help to show the usage. I will discuss one of these options in a minute. But for now, let's just run the proxy. The defaults are probably right for you. Wait a few seconds and pay attention to the coming line from the output. If you don't get unrestricted, there's something wrong. Please ensure that your firewall allows incoming traffic to all your ephemeral UDP port range. If you're running your machine inside your local network, remember to add firewall rules to your home router as well. It seems that the proxy is running correctly. I will suspend the process by pressing Ctrl Z and run it in the background with the command, bg. The simplest way to check if my proxy is working, is by looking at the traffic on my network's interface. Run and load. And wait a few minutes. My proxy Snowflake is working. Forwarding traffic from users, to Snowflake bridges that act as entry nodes into the Tor network. Pretty cool. Okay. Let me stop the proxy by bringing the process into the foreground, and exiting it. Let's take a look at those options again. If you're running your Snowflake proxy at home, and you have an unlimited data plan, with a decent internet connection you won't even notice that your Snowflake proxy is there. On the other hand, if you are on a VPS, chances are, that the amount of monthly data that you can transfer, is limited. The best solution is not to throttle your system's bandwidth, but to limit the maximum number of peers that can simultaneously connect to your proxy. As you can see, the default is to accept an unlimited number of clients. And after a few hours running your proxy, that number can reach into the hundreds. Tweaking the capacity option will make a huge difference in terms of bandwidth usage. I recommend that you set it up at a lower value such as 10, and that you adjust according to figures written in the logs, and the statistics shown by inload. I'll show it to you later in my closing thoughts. Now let's make our proxy always run, by writing a cron job. This task, will make our snowflake proxy run on boot, continuously. The maximum number of allowed peers is 10, and the output of the process plus any error messages, will be redirected into a log file situated in the user Snowflake's home. Let's test it by rebooting the system. The process, proxy, is running. Its process ID, is 664. Let's wait a couple of minutes and check our traffic. Compare these figures with the ones you saw when I ran my proxy with default capacity. A big difference. As I said, tweaking the capacity value will allow you to get your monthly bandwidth usage right, while forwarding the traffic of a few individuals, at full speed. How do you proceed when you want to update? Stop the process. Go to the proxy subdirectory, and get the latest changes from the Git repository. Build the proxy binary, and either restart your system, or start the proxy manually. This is my proxy, after 17 hours of uninterrupted operation. As time goes on, you will be able to project your bandwidth usage, pretty accurately. Inload shows total incoming and outgoing traffic, 
in gigabytes, as well as average transfer rates in megabits per second. Very useful. Your log file will show hourly reports with number of connections and traffic relayed. Please check the link below where you can easily convert megabits per second into gigabytes per month. There's also a conversion table for quick reference. If you already have a VPS that you use for any other purpose, you don't have to rent a new one to run a Snowflake proxy. Just do some quick math, open your local UDP ports, and run a proxy binary with limited bandwidth. Bye bye.